here. Thank you, Ryan Henley, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so very grateful to be here today and never would have thought that I would have the chance to be up here and talking about my story and my craft. Um, okay, so I was telling my six-year-old, Roman, that I was really, really nervous. Um, there's so many of you here. <laughs> Um, and he said that I should make it comedy. So um, he wrote me an opening joke. Okay. Change of plans. We're all going bowling. Um, so, I think he just wanted me to come up and tell Jim Gaffigan jokes or something. Okay, so I love reading the definition of craft um, from the Creative Morning folks. A craft is the instrument in which the authenticity of your being is communicated. Um, this is just a perfect theme for me right now because I'm realizing for the first time in my life how to define my essence um, and how that is essential driving force in the projects that I choose for myself. So today, and I apologize for reading from my laptop, but um, it's just where I'm at. So um, <laughs> I want to simply define the what, how, and the what. So, um, and should not, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm doing all the wrong things. Okay. Um, so, okay, my craft is creating a space for people to have a meaningful um, interaction around the table. Um, and if necessity is the mother of all invention, um, sometimes my craft is inspired by a call to action. Um, and before I, before I tell you why it's important, I sort of need to illuminate a little bit of darkness. Um, okay, so full disclosure, this is a really, really difficult um, talk for me to give. Um, it's just, there's been a lot in my life the last couple years. So, um, okay, and I'm, I promise I'm not going to ugly cry, but I might try to tear. <laughs> um, in April of 2016, in a fury of controversy, um, I discovered that my husband had purchased two tickets to Paris. Not for me, um, but for him and one of our servers at our restaurant, Milk Tooth. Okay, so I'll get back to that later. Um, but let me tell you a little bit first about how I arrived at this Machiavellian betrayal. So, um, in my mid-20s, feeling lost, as we all do in our 20s, um, I joined AmeriCorps, I moved to Arizona, and I started setting up mentorships between high schoolers and little ones on the Navajo reservation. Um, I was a paid volunteer, which meant that um, we worked at the poverty level um, to understand how to eliminate poverty. And I was on food stamps, um, and basically strictly eating processed mac and cheese and frozen pizzas. Um, I gained a bunch of weight, and I got really unhealthy, and was smoking like way too many American spirits. <laughs> Um, so this daily struggle to not be hungry and to stay healthy was juxtaposed with being um, in the most arguably beautiful place in the world. Um, so where the Colorado Plateau ends, um, you can literally like hear the vibration of power and it's just a magical place. Um, and I really felt this sense of disconnect between how we take care of um, the innocent, in this case children, we need guidance and protection, and this idea of how we care for ourselves in terms of what we put in our bodies. Um, so when I moved back to Indianapolis, I was so inspired by this experience that I wanted to learn how to really cook um, and wanted to become a dietitian. So I went to culinary school um, and realized that I already knew how to cook um, and knew what I already wanted to do. So I dropped out of college for the second time and just started working in the industry. So um, because sometimes um, diving into an industry headfirst is like the fastest way to learn how to hone your craft. Um, so I learned how to bake and sell pastry at farmer's markets. And that wanderlust set in again, um, as it always does if you're from the Midwest. Um, and I bounced around the country again. Um, I was a pastry chef in California and found my way back to Indy once more uh, with a job at Goose the Market. Um, and I truly fell in love with the Indianapolis food scene. Um, so realizing that so many people actually really care about where their food comes from, um, you know, uh, 
it was just an amazing opportunity to serve people who really give a damn. So, and I really credit Chris and Molly Ely, the owners, um, for being like true visionary leaders in this industry. Um, they're just seriously the best bosses ever. So, um, I tried being a student for the third time, thinking I was on my way to the IU School of Dietetics. Um, but, being that I'm a terrible student, um, I really just wanted to work more with my hands and create things. Um, so I dropped out for the third time, and I ended up at Trader's Point Creamery making cheese. Um, so I loved making friends with all the Burmese guys that worked there, and it was just so dirty and smelly and fun. Um, and one of my favorite things about it was climbing on top of the big tanker trucks full of milk and drinking the raw milk and then pumping it into all the vats. And OBS driving the forklift was like the best. Um, so um, it was around that time that I met my future ex-husband. And we had this super intense whirlwind relationship. Um, he was a sous chef at a very prominent midtown restaurant called Recess. Um, we were both up and coming in the industry. And we both wanted the same things in life. Um, we wanted a whole slew of kids. We wanted to create delicious food experiences. And we talked a lot about um, there not being enough quality, high-touch restaurant concepts um, that use local products, and but totally with like a laid-back vibe. So I think we got to a point where we were just tired of hearing ourselves complain about the food scene um, and decided to do something about it. Because it's so exhausting to constantly complain about what's lacking when you're not willing to actually put the work in to do something about it. Um, so it was around that time that we started to look at Indianapolis in a different light. Um, we realized that there was this ripe opportunity for young couples like us to do something a little different. Um, we were both um, coming from a place of appreciation, too. Um, there have been so many amazing chefs and restaurateurs who really laid some groundwork here. Um, for me, I was inspired by people like uh, Chef Becky Hostetter of Duos, Regina from our bistro originally, and Greg Hardesty with his culinary playground. Um, and he just happened to be wildly successful at churning out um, up-and-coming chefs without begrudging their future success. Um, so kind of the, you know, laid-back culinary school of this city. So um, you might know Abby Maris of Bluebeard. Um, she's amazing. And, of course, my ex-husband. Um, so there are really a ton of people doing really cool shit, um, making the this, this scene what it is today. And we were just two young, reckless punks just trying to take everything we learned um, from our travels and our families, tweak it, and give it a little bit of our own flavor. Um, so just six months after we met, we found out we were going to have a baby. Uh, we were ecstatic. Um, so exciting. We were just riding on this high of this like relentless motion of pushing forward. It was so sweet, um, and we were putting on these super fun underground supper clubs, um, featuring all of our friends' venues and their music and their pottery. Um, and we were then creating our own brand of hospitality, and we were living in total optimism. So um, my time had come at the creamery, literally because I was just too enormous to fit in between the cheese slats. <laughs> like, it was a, a real problem. So um, <clears throat> I came back to work for Chris and Molly, um, and they let me politely berate all the customers, being super pregnant, um, until I gave birth. So Roman was born at home, above Bluebeard before it was Bluebeard, um, and it was perfect. Um, Mom stayed at home 24-7 nursing. Um, Dad worked two jobs. And then we started to plan our restaurant together. Um, so I think at that point, though, our relationship had already diverged in the yellow wood, so to speak. Um, so it's kind of funny that we typically spend our entire 20s um, exploring and discovering and trying to figure out, you know, what the fuck we're doing, um, only to find out that we actually do know what the fuck we're doing. Um, and all that groundwork we lay um, seems to come full circle. And you realize that you've always been on this path um, and where you are right now in this very moment is exactly where you need to be. Um, so I'm realizing only now that I've always 
woven this rich textile of food and philanthropy in my life. Um, my loom is my craft of bringing people together to the table and um, creating space for connectivity. So, and this deep-rooted um, passion for hospitality has kind of always been there, and it was nurtured at a very young age. Um, I can remember cooking with my grandmother, watching her grow her own food, um, and feeding the neighbors, and learning what that good old southern-rooted Hoosier hospitality actually meant. Um, and she taught me how to cook and taught me how to appreciate like the pure joy of calling loved ones to the dinner table. So, okay, back to the planning a milk tooth. So it was super fun and dreamy. Um, it pulled us into a frenzy of possibility. And we just wanted something unapologetically true to us. Um, somewhat of an extension of our personalities. Um, we thrifted dishes. We organized pop-up brunches. I usually spent mornings at Calvin Fletcher's coffee shop, basically holding office hours, um, meetings, learning what kind of social media I wanted to do, and trying to figure out what our demographics was going to look like. Um, I wanted to hire all of our friends and family and uh, grow a little community and allow this sense of ownership to the employees who um, were given all the creative license to let it flow. Um, the plan was to be open and light and to challenge traditional ideas of, um, of dining and to just be ourselves, like total weirdos. Um, and we made so many mistakes, um, like delayed permits and a very chunked up approach to crowdfunding. Um, and upon opening, we hired my dad. Um, he was the acoustic consultant to install our speaker system. And he literally broke his back falling off of a ladder. Um, he's okay now. He's totally fine. Um, but we just had the best crew around us supporting us. And we were so grateful. Um, so, okay, so here's how we laid it out. So my husband was the head chef, obviously. And I usually having taken um, a role doing baking and pastry um, in our pop-ups, I wanted to be the pastry chef. And it would have been totally badass. Um, but both parents couldn't get up at four in the morning to go to work. So naturally, I think as most mothers typically do, um, I took a very flexible, supportive, less creative, um, but equally as vital role back of house. So chef was the loud, brash, charming, face of the restaurant um, with award-winning food. And I was the quiet organizer in the back. Um, I discreetly sipped my coffee and honed in on things like um, design, numbers, marketing assets, PR, HR, p ls paychecks, bank deposits, um, policies. And I tried my hardest to respond to every single customer who commented, posted, reviewed, um, and just liked our vibe. So. Um, I also had to endure this barrage of like sweaty, creepy as fuck delivery drivers um, <laughs> who always felt it necessary to like comment on my knee socks or like call me chef's secretary, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't hold it against him, or maybe I should, um, but I definitely shut it down. Um, so I don't know what it is about certain men who um, are incomprehensibly inept at realizing how women might feel in their very overpowering advances. Um, and if y'all need a really good example of this in the industry, just step foot into Cash and Carry or the Restaurant Depot. <laughs> Some of you might know what I'm talking about. Um, and I also sat there and smiled sympathetically to some little princess who would flip her hair and complain about her tables, um, her headache, or doing too much coke on Monday night. Um, I wasn't out on Monday night. Um, I was quietly sipping a beer at home on my porch after putting my son to bed. So I missed all the parties. Um, and when I did go out, I felt really out of place. Um, my lifestyle of being a mother and a supporter just didn't translate into that late night raucous networking, as my husband once called it. Um, but Milk Tooth was just the perfect storm. We nailed it on so many things. Um, the location, the concept, the high-touch menu, the low-brow attitude, um, the personable staff. And um, we truly created a space that made people feel elevated. Um, and we were really just trying to pay homage to our mothers and grandmothers and all 
the while trying to raise a little family of our own. Um, super thirsty, guys. So the success of the restaurant was really unforeseen. Um, within months of opening, um, we were being recognized by Zagat. Um, we were winning Food and Wine's Best New Chef, where we got to cook in Aspen and meet our celebrity crushes, like um, that one time I met Andrew Zimmern at three in the morning in a hotel lobby. Um, kind of a highlight. We were on the Bon Appetit top 10 best restaurants list, um, where we got to travel to New York for this like amazing 24-hour party, getting drenched in the rain, um, and um, with a handful of our restaurant crew. Um, we were featured on the Food Network, and my personal favorite, the mayor's declaration of October 3rd as Milk Tooth Day. Um, for me, that was like such a huge honor, I don't know why. Um, we had so much to celebrate, um, and we couldn't even understand what was happening, um, but it was such a blissful moment in time. And all the while, still just trying to figure out how to maintain success, run a business, manage staff, and raise a family and keep a marriage alive. Um, so I mentioned earlier one of the nastier details preceding my divorce. Um, but also in 2016 in April, before I found out about those tickets to Paris, um, I met my friend at the Delhi Palace for an Indian lunch buffet um, to cry on her shoulder about my failing marriage. And she so unfortunately had to tell me that um, my husband, who had recently moved out, was in a full-fledged relationship with one of our employees. But, um, <laughs> okay, so, in her words, though, um, when she found out, um, she just knew that it had to come from someone who loves me enough to say the hardest things and um, hold that space for shit to not be okay. Um, by the way, you've got to keep badass people like her in your life. Um, so, um, I was totally blindsided, and all of a sudden I had no idea how to breathe, um, and everything came crashing in, um, and it was my only function at that moment to try to figure out how to protect my um, little tiny four-year-old son. Okay, so mind you, this was only two weeks after my husband fired me from our restaurant um, because I was asking too many questions about a different alleged affair. Um, and I had no legal ownership in the business as it came down to it. Um, my name just simply wasn't on the partner agreements. And, you know, I've learned a lot since then. Um, and that's just the way it was. Um, you guys, relationships fail all the time. Marriages fail. Restaurants fail. You know, it's all a learning process. Um, so I had left for California temporarily. Um, with my son, just to, in hopes that he could play with his cousins and um, not see me totally freak the fuck out. Um, and just a few days later, my grandmother died, and I came back to Indiana just in time for her funeral and filed for divorce. Okay, so now all I really care to say about this is that um, success affects everyone differently. It changes perspectives. It propels certain behaviors and allows an unchecked amount of um, celebratory partying. Um, and something that this industry is not shy of, nor lacking. Um, and there was a certain level of consumption that I just couldn't participate in. Um, and it's so true that being a parent, you make sacrifices, um, and I'll always oblige um, for the happiness of my boy. So shit fell apart. Um, and as I'm sure a lot of you guys have experienced as well, so, and a lot of people were affected amid this um, serious controversy. Um, and I made a very delicate exit from Milk Tooth in July of 2016. And I spent the better part of a year trying to figure out how to get divorced. Um, and how to get through the trauma of the circumstances. And I was just completely broken, and it was a very harsh reset. Um, and I absolutely would have burnt it all to the ground if it weren't for a few key people in my life that were supporting me. Um, who understood on another level how messed up this really was. So, and for my kiddo, who was just so innocently wrapped up in the scandal. Okay, so I thought about totally getting out of the industry. Um, it all felt so like disgusting and toxic and sycophantic and um, 
Like, people were just opportunistic, snakes in the grass, just waiting for moments of spotlight and power. Um, and there were so many reasons that I could hate the industry. And being a person who's always supported females in the business, um, I think it was especially hard to deal with the fact that I had experienced trauma from other women um, that I was always a champion of. Um, so, but at the end of it, um, I just decided that I was not going to let anyone take my passion away um, from this industry. So, in the middle of my personal upheaval and stripped down career, um, I was trying to keep my focus on some side projects that I had already started, been planning. Um, I swear, it's going to get like really more positive from here on out. <laughs> so, um, and that summer, um, my co-founder co Julia and I had opened a farmer's market in Garfield Park. And we had worked tireless, tirelessly together um, for a year and a half organizing this sustainable food-focused market that could address some larger issues of food accessibility and education of what slow food means. Um, we're now in our third season of a very successful and rapidly growing nonprofit, um, and it's just getting good food in the hands of the people that need it the most. Um, and our mission's also focused on creating a gathering place for community interactions. Um, and I wasn't conscious of it at the time, but I think it was the perfect manifestation of my craft. Um, we were just inspired to start this grassroots effort. Um, we had just seen that there was a niche that wasn't being filled in the community. Um, and there was no Saturday morning market anywhere downtown, which just seemed silly. Um, and like, come on, Indianapolis, like, if you want to be, like, a big deal, you have to provide certain things, like good public transportation, um, more urban green spaces, access to healthy food. I think we could all agree. And I'm kind of obsessed with this idea of um, social entrepreneurship um, as it relates to um, listening to what a neighborhood or a community really needs and responding with compassion, not just profitability. So I think if your intentions are altruistic, um, the opportunities to make money will follow. That being said, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> I volunteer my time a lot. Um, and six months leaving, after leaving Milk Tooth, I was super broke and just decided to put myself out there into the universe um, and see what I could manifest. So I opened A Rose Hospitality as an Ashley Rose. Um, it's just me offering services that were um, inherent to me. So consulting, dinner parties, um, festivals, everything in between. Um, I coordinated some private dining at the IMA in Newfields. And I even had an opportunity to spill some gravy on the floor at the Lily House in front of the Lily family. <laughs> Another highlight of my life. Um, I col consultant was, consulted with some developers to open um, a miniature park called La Idol, um, which is under construction right now. Um, I co-founded Indy's first brunch festival called Baby Got Brunch, which is a 1,200 person tasting event and the benefit for the Padachi Foundation. Um, Last year, we raised almost $9,000 um, for the foundation, which translated into over 3,000 meals um, served to kids who face hunger and food insecurity. Um, we have our second Baby Got Brunch coming up August 18th. You guys should all get tickets. Um, and I also co-founded a group called Indie Women in Food with my friend Sonia Overheiser of A Couple Cooks, um, which creates a platform for women in the industry to support each other and not break each other down. Um, there are some total badass boss babes in this industry who are also being wives, mothers, sisters, friends, and they also face strife. Um, and there are just literally too many to name. Um, if I had gotten my shit together, I would have slides of them, and any slides at all, actually. But um, <laughs> I'm also moving this week, so I'm barely holding it together. <laughs> I almost showed up in like moving overalls, you guys. It was bad. So, I'm proud of myself. Um, so, my goal as a hospitality designer is to not only bring chefs to the right events and bring people around the table for connection and conversation, but also to nurture positive change in this little community of ours. Um, we have to take our resources and our passion and do something positive to impact the community and protect our children. 
And I'm super concerned about um, the toxic cu culture of the food industry and how women are devalued and given lesser opportunities um, than men in the industry and how people of color and LGBTQ community are faced constantly with adversity. Um, uh, how the Anthony Bourdain's of the world are silently suffering. I think that hit everyone super hard. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but... Um, and I think a perfect example of how to mix this idea of food and philanthropy um, was when we organized um, a festival at Milk Tooth called Big Gay Day. Um, this was completely reactionary to the 2015 um, Religious Freedom Restoration Act, and we raised almost $20,000 for the ACLU of Indiana to protect the rights of the LGBTQ community. Um, I think that's awesome. So many people turned out. Um, and so we also need to look at how leaders in this industry um, can not only, like, they turn a blind eye to addiction and depression, but they also encourage this imbalanced behavior um, as a means of, like, proving one's work ethic or dedication to the job. Um, and if we're at a point in this industry where people are looked at as weak for trying to maintain a healthy work-life balance, um, then we're doing, like, everything very, very wrong. Um, it's not normal to work on your feet for 70 hours a week and then get called a pussy for not keeping up with the after party. Um, like, none of this is normal. So, I want to foster change. Um, and I don't know exactly how to do it except for continuing to support those who need it. Um, and just never give up, no matter what life throws at me. Um, I don't know where this endless well of positivity comes from, but I can tell it's a gift and I promise I won't waste it on dysfunction. Um, I will never stop exploring new opportunities to create positive change. And who knows, maybe one day I'll take advantage of those new nonstop flights to Paris, um, eat at a little cafe, maybe go bowling, and find some crafty romance of my own. I, my co-founders, um, my promotional partners, Keep Indianapolis Deep, Kid Presents, um, we just wanted to do something really fun. Um, I'm going to take this off, actually. That was not graceful. Um, so we decided to just open a large format uh, festival at Pan Am. Um, we had about 30 vendors, all local restaurants who were... Um, had brunch concepts um, and just serving awesome, delicious samples of food. And this was all a benefit for um, the Padishu Foundation. And um, it's just really important for me to give back and um, also um, just raise money for an awesome organization that's feeding children. I mean, one in five uh, children in Indianapolis face food insecurity. That means they, are, they experience hunger at least once a day. And I just feel like that's wholly unacceptable. So, um, yeah, it was just an amazing experience to, like, get people together, organize this thing, have a lot of fun. Um, I had wished that more people would have been dancing, but I guess it was, like, <laughs> 10 in the morning. <laughs> so, but maybe next time. That's a great question. Hi, Natalie. <laughs> um, so... You know, I've decided to set roots here in Indianapolis for obvious reasons. Um, family, kiddo, all that good stuff. So um, I'm now mentally committed to being here and to improving um, just what I can. So doing what I can. Um, my ultimate dream really is just to find new opportunities to where I can step up and... Um, you know, show people what my craft is and just make a difference. So um, I think that when people experience trauma of any kind, um, I don't know, for me, I think it was just really important for me to like dive into this idea of compassion and kindness. That was just kind of the only way I knew how to respond. Um, so um, I'm just currently looking for opportunities to do fun things. Um, Okay, but to answer your question more, I guess. Um, you know, I just love the idea of having like a brick and mortar, like a place to go, a place to like invite people in. Um, 
So everything I'm doing right now just feels a little meta and heavy, like mentally, it's just a lot of organization, but I love like watching people eat and enjoy themselves. So maybe another restaurant. Um, I think that um, really it has to do with just like honing your essence, right? So, and then being inspired by that, um, just to do something incredible and to show people um, what's unique to you. Pretty simply. Is there a question over here? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yes. Um, buy a ticket to Baby Got Brunch. <laughs> shameless. I'm shameless. Um, and also, actually, you know, um, in addition to that, um, go to the farmer's market. Um, you know, we're all paid, we're not unpaid volunteers, so we're a working board. We have an amazing community there that's really inspired to get together and, um, and do this thing that's great for the community. So come out and support that. Um, and also just experience the community and learn about good food. Um, I think a lot of times people don't really understand what local food is. Um, it seems obvious, but it's not. Um, and so we do a lot of education with the market um, and it's really important to um, just show people that we, our vendors are producers only and we're all sustainable. So. Um, everyone adheres to these practices of like good, clean, and fair food. Um, and then we focus a lot of effort into getting people that are in SNAP programs or, um, you know, in the WIC program to come out and use their vouchers and their food stamps to get healthy food. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, so if you're unfamiliar with... Um, a local grassroots organization called Slow Food Indy. Um, it's a worldwide organization, but we have our own chapter here. And um, I was on the board for three years, and that's where this idea of the farmer's market sort of um, grew from that. But um, they have an amazing list. It's called Snail of Approval. So their logo is a snail, and they have this great list of restaurants um, and artisans and grocers. Um, and they've already vetted them. You know, they've had to submit applications and go through this um, screening process. And so um, it's just a really fantastic, it's on their website. Um, and you just know exactly that like these people are doing the thing that we all should be striving for. Um, so that's providing good food, clean food, so like no pesticides, you know, organic if possible. And um, food that's fair for all, which means they're paying fair wages to their workers or their farmers or whatever. That's a great question. Um, so yeah, obviously when you go through sort of like a public breakup situation, um, it probably felt more public to me. You know, I'm sure most of you don't even know the details, right? So um, this was a really hard talk for me to give because so many things, like um, just worried about perception and, um, you know, despite the circumstances, like I, I have a lot of love for a lot of people in my life and um, a lot of forgiveness. And so um, I was just really nervous about um, poten potentially damaging any future success of my ex-husband. Um, that's a very honest answer. So I, I just feel very vulnerable being up here. Um, and I hope you guys appreciate like how raw this is and true and, you know, just, yeah, putting myself out there because why not? So um, that's a great question too. Um, I think that um, I've really learned how to be kind to myself throughout this process. You know, um, divorce and trauma and whatever can bring up a lot of like ugly internal strife, right? Um, and it just really highlighted a lot of things and dysfunction that 
um, I was feeling within myself, right? So um, I just feel like a lot stronger. Um, and I feel like I am really able to more quickly and readily um, pinpoint what I want to do with my life now, you know? Not waste any more fucking time. So. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> He's like a little chef in training. And it's cute, but I'm also like, please don't become a chef. Just do something different. <laughs> but he's got this little like engineer brain. So um, hopefully he'll be an amazing like scientist or inventor, whatever. Um, and he can be all the things. He can be a chef too. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's his life, right? He's only six, but um, yeah. <laughs> he would be so happy that I told his joke, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I think that I'm not good at showing how, like, stressed out I am sometimes. <laughs> and so um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, it's a lot to juggle, right? So um, wearing so many different hats, and then at the end, of the end of the day, just also being a mother and trying to create space for maybe a relationship, I don't know. Um, so it's a lot to manage, and I just keep focusing on being positive and that all of this is happening for a reason. Like, I could have said no to this talk, but I also couldn't. I mean, this is like such a cool opportunity, and it's, a very, the timing is very interesting. Um, there's a lot going on in my life. There's just a lot happening in general with other people's lives. And um, so I just trust, um, I trust in the universe to really kind of like give me a, the right opportunities at the right time. Um, and I'm just grateful for that. So if it's a lot, then it's a lot, you know, but what else are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs>